bro. Got you, bro. Brother man, bro. What the f was this chapter? Jesus Christ. First off, I need to give Kayodana and the rest of the team some credit, man. Because this chapter had some insanely sick paneling, which is the usual, but I gotta give credit as always. So much shit happened this chapter. Did y'all see those demonic ass ears on Curl? Again, I initially didn't think he was a real person, but we actually saw his hands. They were in the gloves, bro. The hands were in there. Yeah, bro, he gotta be a shapeshifter. He gotta be. I have nothing else to say about that. He's gotta be a shapeshifter. Anyway, man, there's also more to his game than meets the eye, as Zodil so eloquently stated. The way the fight between Ryo and Jabber was drawn in this chapter was exquisite as f more than the usual and we finally got Fu to help us out and who better to ask him to help us than Grizz bro we gotta talk about this shit we gotta talk about it we just have to as y'all know man I'm Damo Senpai the Gachi Akata enthusiast the Kagurabachi enthusiast here with chapter 97 of Gachi Akata and man oh man this one got me hype as hell if you are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe make sure you do yourselves a favor and join us on the journey to 10k subscribers by the end of summer so with all of that stuff out of the way bro it's time The first page of this chapter was something else, man, because it made Momoa seem like a heavenly figure for the most part. Like she comes from the sphere. You know what I mean? Because that's how they make all people from the sphere seem very heaven. It also reminded me of K. Urana's one shot, Nokase. I'll find the image and put that in here somewhere, but it was a specific image from Nokase that it reminded me of. But that's besides the point. Just making some observations, man, just in case she tries to throw some Nokase characters in here. I wouldn't mind that. It seemed like those worlds were connected low key. I pointed that out in one of my earlier videos probably from like chapter 20 or 30 or something, somewhere in that range. One of the sickest things about this was that we were being deceived because it seemed like Momoa was gonna beat us to the punch, bro, and get the info for free. But Curl was not only aware of that notion, but also aware of how her abilities work. Should I have been surprised? Probably not, but it surprised me nonetheless. Momoa's face said everything about it too because she wasn't aware that he was aware. But bro, those ears fucked me up, man. I cannot lie. I don't remember them looking like this when we first met him. Am I tripping? Did they look like this? I'm gonna go back and look at his ears from when he just like, you know, jumped up and introduced himself. But bro, I don't think they did. Anyway, bro, did you see how small her hands were in comparison to his big ass ogre hands? Jesus Christ, made no sense. He also knew her full name, knew her abilities, knew she was on the Raiders front line. How though? Is Bundus the one infiltrating them and giving information to him? Because he was also aware of the info broker during our scuffle underground. Maybe I'm tripping, maybe I'm misremembering, but it's, I think that was the case. He also let them know that the only person allowed to get information here is Rudo. But that's not the most alarming part, ladies and gentlemen. Zodil started probing him for information, asking what the entire purpose of this was, knowing that he'd eventually be caught, knowing that the other end of the highway is no man's land, which is, if I'm not mistaken, where Rudo fell. I think he fell just outside of no man's land, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, this was all intriguing because for as curious as Zodil is, I'm even more curious. What is out there that we don't know about? What is so important about using this game of tag to take us there? Better yet, is that where the giver who made the chokers resides? This is so fascinating, bro. I can't wait to find out what is happening there. If you can't wait, make sure y'all let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, we then move on to the Rio and Jabber fight, which had me super hyped because bro, just how elegant yet chaotic can you make a fight look? I'm just, you know, asking for the general population, like just asking y'all the question. How elegant yet chaotic can you make a fight look? That is exactly what this fight exemplified. Grace, elegance, chaos, fun, you name it, this had it. This right here is low key my favorite set of panels aside from what we see at the end, because while on one hand, Jabber is having the time of his life, on the other hand, Ryo looks intent on finishing this as soon as possible, if not killing him. 
Can we talk about the sequence though? Bro, I'm glad I got to showcase, right? I'm glad I get to showcase these inhuman ass panels because I brag about this in almost every single video of Gachi Akata, right? Every single video that I've made about Gachi Akata. K Urana and crew never fails to deliver on God level artistry. We also lost Rudo in this entire process, which was fucking hilarious. All because Jabber and Ryo were scrapping on the roof of the car. So somewhere in the midst of all this chaos, bro, amidst all this commotion, Rudo got tossed into a sea of fucking trash beasts. And we only found that out because Engine was losing his mind trying to figure out how they were going to get rid of this trash beast problem, all while being able to beat the Raiders to Kuro. How are we gonna get our bro back? Anyway. This is where shit got even cooler because the more I think about it, this is really all Fu was looking for. And similar to what he did for Rudo, he did it for Fu here. And if y'all wonder who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Gris. Gris asked Fu if he would help him. And think about it, bro. All Fu ever wanted to do was be useful to someone, to be treated fairly and asked with genuine care. And that is one thing we can give Gris, bro, because he's always down to protect someone. And did you see the look on Fu's face, bro? He wasn't being forced to do something against his will. He wasn't forced to fight somebody he had no business fighting. None of that. He was just asked politely, mind you. That was all he and he needed. Wait, so is it hi or he? Y'all gonna correct me in the comment section anyway. Because if it's he and he, that's pretty funny. Like he, he, right? It's pretty funny. Or if it's hi, it's like high time. Mr. Hyde, it's like hi. I don't know which one it is, but y'all let me know in the comment section. This part was so sick because I was always wondering whether or not that was a listening device created by the Raiders to spy on the cleaners. Or was that actually Fool's ability? And now we see that it was the latter. It actually has me looking forward to the next chapter because I really want to see what Fool or he, I should say, is capable of. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this chapter. If there was anything that I missed that you think I should have covered, make sure y'all let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. So close to being fully caught up, right? So close to being fully caught up, just gotta record chapter 98 and I can lock myself in a dungeon and edit for like 12 or 14 straight hours to get all of this done. Make sure y'all stay tuned, bro, because we got so much left to cover and so much cool shit left to see. But I have a question that I feel like needs to be answered. Bro, where the fuck is the anime announcement at? I know I'm getting impatient, but holy hell, bro. I would love to have it by the summertime because that would literally set the world on fire. And by on fire, I mean in excitement. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here and do some editing. I will see you guys in the next video.